Hello everyone, I'm Dan. In this tutorial I'm going to show you how to install the NetWide Assembler, also known as NASM, and we're going to install that to a virtual machine running on Windows. Now this is the first of my assembly programming tutorials, so let's go ahead and get started by opening up your web browser to my website, thegpu.com, selecting menu, and you know actually I've kind of redesigned this here, we could select assembly language tutorials, but I've kind of simplified my main page here, so I'm going to just click on the assembly language here. We'll select installing NASM on a VM running on Windows. So throughout my assembly language tutorials, I will be demonstrating code for two common assemblers, MASM and NASM. Now MASM is the Microsoft Macro Assembler, and it is designed specifically for Microsoft Windows operating systems. Uh, NASM is the NetWide Assembler, and it is perfect for Linux-based operating systems. Now in this tutorial, I will show you how to install NASM on a VM running Ubuntu using VirtualBox. Okay, let's get um, let's begin by downloading the VirtualBox software directly from VirtualBox.org. Okay, click on this big link right here. I'm gonna come over to Windows Host. You can also install on Mac if you like. There, maybe a few things will be different about the the uh, installation, but for the most part, it'll all pretty much be the same there. All right, there we go. Boom, let's run that. Okay, click Next. I'm gonna change the location of where it installs it. By default, it installs it to the program Oracle VirtualBox, but I want it to be on a different drive than my main one there. So I'm just gonna put it over on this. Uh, I'm just gonna name this Virtual, eh, you know what, I'll name it VirtualBox. It'll be good. Okay, on my E drive, plenty of space on an SSD over there. Okay, we'll leave all the rest of this stuff there. Next, we'll go with all the default stuff here. It's gonna disconnect the networking interface. Um, no problem. You might have a little blip in the YouTube video there when you run this, but uh, should pop right back there fairly quickly. Okay, the installation only takes a few seconds, so. We'll be up and going here in no time. Okay. There we go, it was just that easy. All right, now what we wanna do is we wanna go download the Ubuntu ISO. So I'm gonna pop back over to the web browser. And we'll just close out of that window. Okay, here's the link for it right here to the Ubuntu website. And we're gonna download the latest desktop ISO file. Okay, so we'll select download from the menu option over here. And then 18.04 just happens to be the latest, greatest uh, desktop version there. You can click on that and um, it'll take about, uh, it will, depending on how much, what speed you have, it's one little over one and a half gigabytes uh, for the download on that. I'm running a gigabit network here. It took me just about a minute there, but I've already got it downloaded, so we don't need to dink around while that's going. But once you've got this downloaded, we're gonna pop back over to the uh, VirtualBox software here, okay? And we're gonna go ahead and get started on, on that stuff. So I'm gonna click New. And by default, it's got like Microsoft Windows and whatnot there, but it's kind of smart. As we start typing in Ubuntu, it changes it to Linux. I'm just gonna call this the the name of this virtual machine as Ubuntu. Ubuntu desktop there. Uh, you want to make sure Linux is selected and 64-bit as well too. Um, I recommend going with a minimum of two gigs of RAM there, so 2048 megabytes, but uh, that would be the bare minimum. I'm going to do 4096 on my system. I got plenty to spare. I got 32 gig running on this one. Okay, we'll just leave on create a virtual hard disk now. That's selected there and let's click create. Now over here, this is the space. I'm just gonna go and allocate like 15 gig. That'll be plenty for this. Uh, I'm gonna make this a fixed size and we are ready to, everything else will just leave leave the same there. Click create on that. It'll take maybe about 30 seconds to a minute to actually create this here. And during that time, I'm just gonna talk a little bit about assembly language. So ch chances are, if you're watching this, this tutorial, you'll probably already have some idea that you really you really want to learn assembly language and you might you may or may not realize you know some of the awesome benefits of it now of course when you 
when you compile C, basically C creates these little object files, which are the same thing that assembly language will too. But uh, with assembly language, you can actually optimize some of the stuff um, for, for incredible speed performance. So it's nice. It, it just basically gives you con complete control over a lot of the stuff there. So, um, all right. So now that we've got this here, what we're going to do is we're just going to double click on this. Okay. And this will bring up this little dialog here, select startup disk, right? With this little browse folder here. And you want to select the, the ISO that you've downloaded uh, in the meantime there. And so, oh, wow, it's actually closer to 2 gig. So um, anyway, uh, select that. OK on that. And let's go ahead and start. All right. In a little bit here, I'll be pausing the video, but I've got to walk you guys through just a couple of things there um, in the meantime. So. This will sit here for about 15 seconds or so at this little thing here, and then that'll come up, and then the screen will go blank, and so on and so forth there. Okay, and I'll try to make this a little bit larger here. Um, okay, we'll do install Ubuntu option here. And English. Do a normal installation. Anima download updates while installing Ubuntu. Continue. Now this is erase disk and install Ubuntu. Warning, this will delete all your programs, documents, photos, music, and any other files in all operating systems. And this is, this, is, uh, this is nothing to worry about. It actually isn't going to delete your Windows installation or your Mac installation or anything like that. This is just a standard uh, message there. You know, um, The installation has no idea it's running inside of a virtual machine. And that's the 15 gigabytes that, that we allocated from the virtual box there. So by selecting install now, it's not going to even touch anything, um, you know, as far as our operating systems, our files, or anything like that on our local operating system here. Okay, so we'll select continue on that. Uh, it's got my location here. That's good. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to set this this virtual machine up as NVIDIA, which will kind of mimic my installations for both my Jetson Xavier and my Jetson TX2 that I've got going on there. My super secret NVIDIA password there. Log on automatically, and I'm gonna go ahead and continue. All right, now it's gonna run through a whole bunch of stuff here, so I'm just going to pause the video and then pick it back up when it's done installing there. Okay, the installation is complete. Uh, we need, just need to restart this. Okay, and it's just asking us to press enter on that. Okay, what's new? Next, next. No, you can if you want to, and we are ready to go. Okay, so the first thing you want to do here is open up a terminal. Click on the show applications.
Okay, and then we'll just scroll down here to terminal and open that up. Uh, you know what, we'll just remind me later on that. I'm gonna right click on here, add to favorites, so that'll kind of peg it over here to this bar. Um, and then we wanna make this larger here. So let's go into the preferences, pick a much larger font size. Maybe for this video, I'll go with, let's see how 16 looks. It's not bad. I'll do 8, 17, 18. All right. That's much better. Okay, we'll pull this over here. Okay, so the first thing we're going to do is install NASM. It's real quick install. So we're going to use uh, uh, sudo and apt-get install NASM. Okay. Next thing after this, I'm gonna we're gonna install a program called LeafPad. If you're not familiar with it, it's pretty much the same as Windows Notepad. Um, I just happen to like it. It's a fairly simple editor, but everyone's got their favorite editors these days. Okay, now I've just got a little dependency I need to install for LeafPad there. All right, now we're set. If I type in NASM here, I should see like uh, error, no input file selected. So that looks pretty good there. Uh, I'm gonna make a directory here, uh, right off the, right off my desktop folder here. And I'm just gonna call this uh, assembly. Okay. Uh, we'll go ahead and change directories to the assembly folder. And one of the, um, let me pop back over to my web browser here real quick. Oops, just hit my wrong keys in here. I gotta get outside of that and then hit that. Okay, so um, got all the all the stuff over here uh, that you'll need to type in in order to, to get all that stuff going there. But um, one of the things that I'm gonna talk about next time around is, is something that's called a guest editions and that'll allow us to cut and paste this code uh, that I've got right here, the assembly code um, from Windows into the virtual machine here. Um, but for now, we can't do that. So we're going to have to type in all this stuff here, okay? So I just want to make you guys aware that um, everything I do on here is is over here on my website too as well, including the uh, the, build, the build and linker there. Um, and let's go ahead and just pop back over there. Okay, so uh, let's leaf pad. Uh, we're just going to call this first.asm. Okay. Boom. And let's set up some options here as well. Let's change our font. Uh, I was pretty happy with that 18 there. That looked pretty good. And let's do line numbers as well. Maybe I'll even go larger on that font there. Let's go up to 20. Okay. All right. So basically, don't worry about all the syntax here. I'm just going to set all this stuff up. I'll obviously be explaining this in a future tutorial there. Uh, but you can just type everything that I've got over there. We'll just do uh, welcome to assembly language. Uh, 10 is a carriage or Turn line, uh, character return uh, zero, just basically the end of the string there. Um, I'm going to do another variable here called uh, len and equ basically. I don't want to get too much into it there. The dollar sign tells us where we're at in the file and then the starting position of welcome. Uh, this will actually store this variable, um, uh, the length of this whole entire string up here, including the 10 and the null zero there. 
Uh, this data section, well, what the hell, I'll just go over some of this stuff just, just briefly. Um, basically, these are all of our constants here. The next section is gonna is gonna be text, and it'll contain all of our all of our code there. So, um, and underscore start is our entry point. And the first thing we're going to do is move into the EAX, EAX register. Is four four happens to be system right. Uh, move. EBX and don't worry about any of this making actual any sense. I'll go through these things in depth there. CX we're gonna put in our welcome, which is this constant variable up here. Okay. And the EDX the length of that, which is this length variable right here. And then to do a system call, uh, we basically have to just basically send over an ADH, a hex 80. Right? And then when we're all done, we're just going to move into the EAX register 1. I'm um, just going to XOR. Um, you could do XOR. Well, you know what? Uh, I'll do it a, a different way here. I'll do EBX 0, which is our exit parameter there. And... There's another just syntax that you can type for hex 80 there. Okay, uh, let's go ahead and save this. And we won't be able to pop back over here because it's kind of still running there. So we'll just need to open up a new terminal there. And let's change directories to our assembly folder. And then let's go ahead and do our the NASM syntax. First dot ASM. Okay. If I do an ls right here, it created this first dot o, which is an object file there. Uh, let's do an ld, uh, which is the linker. And don't worry about all this. And they all look, look, it should look completely Greek to you if you've never dealt with any of this first, right? Um, and then our uh, minus o for our output file. And we'll just call this thing first. Okay. I did some ls right now. So now we actually have a, a first executable here. And let's go ahead and just execute that. And welcome to assembly language. So perfect. All right. So if you get to this point, then you've got everything installed properly. Um, so that all of my future tutorials will work just fine for you there. Um, I'm going to pop back over to my web browser real quick here. focus inside of there all right um, so once again everything here as far as what I typed in is all on my all on my web browser there um, you know stay tuned for my next tutorial uh, where I will show you how to get MASM up and running um, also I will will be doing a, a tutorial shortly on installing guest editions uh, guest editions is of course the uh, the um, it's an Ubuntu package there and uh, which will allow us to cut and paste between the virtual machine and windows anyway um, that concludes this tutorial thanks for watching